Assalamu alaikum students. The topic for today's video is air resistance, upthrust and tension force. Let us see what is air resistance. Air resistance is a type of friction. As you know friction is an opposing force it slows the moving object it works in the direction opposite to the direction of the movement of the object so air resistance is also a type of friction but it acts on the objects which are in air so let's take this example of aeroplane here in this image the aeroplane is moving towards the left. The motion of the aeroplane is towards the left. So as the aeroplane moves through the air, the air particles hit the aeroplane. And there is a force which acts opposite to the direction of the aeroplane. And that opposing force is called as air friction, air resistance. So the friction between the object in the air, between the material which is in the air, is the air resistance. In this image, there are two types of four wheelers. The upper one, first one, is having a broader front the front part of the vehicle is broad so here the area of contact is more so if the area of contact is more the air resistance will be more so the air resistance on the first vehicle shown with red arrow is 400 Newton but if you see the car which is the blue one which is given in the image down the front part of the car is streamlined streamlined means it is narrowing like a fish like a body of a fish so it is narrowing tapering in the front so here what happens is the area of contact the area facing the air movement of air is less the front part is tapering okay streamlined so your air resistance will be less compared to the vehicle which is given up so here the air resistance is 300 Newton. So that is why you must have noticed the racing cars, they are streamlined because if they are streamlined, the air resistance will be less. That It will oppose the motion of an object less. So the speed of an object can be more. Now the cyclists, if they want to ride the cycle at a higher speed they couch themselves down okay they couch down low why do they do this they do it so that the body which is exposed to air is less yes so if the body exposed the area con exposed is less the air resistance will be less so the speed can be increased also the helmet which is used by this cyclist is streamlined it is not flat it is streamlined yes as it is shown in the image with the red arrow so due to streamlined helmets the air resistance is again it becomes low and the speed of the cyclist can be increased then so this is how using different ways using the streamlining process Streamlining is a way which reduces air resistance and thus the speed of the object or vehicle can be increased. Air resistance also acts on the objects which are in the air that is here in this image. Air resistance is acting on this parachute. So here the movement the parachute is coming down yes towards the earth so the force of gravity is 
acting on that parachute with the help of that it is coming downwards. So air resistance is the force which opposes the direction of the movement. So the movement here is downwards. So air resistance will be opposite to it. That is it will be upwards. So if the object is moving towards the left, air resistance will be towards the right. If the object is moving towards the right, air resistance will be towards the left. And if the object as is shown in this image, if it is moving downwards, the air resistance will be upwards. So this is how it works in the direction opposite to the movement of the object. The another name for air resistance is also it is also called as drag, it is a drag force. Now let us see what is up thrust. Up thrust is an upward force exerted by a fluid and is opposes the weight of an object. So upward force, up thrust is an upward force okay and it acts opposite to the gravity. So gravity pulls all the object downwards towards itself. So up thrust is always in the upper direction. Now here this image is of a ship. So below the water of course there is ground is there, earth is there. So the force which is acting on this ship is gravity which is acting downwards. So up thrust will be in opposite direction. So it will be upwards. So your gravity force, force of gravity and the up thrust, the, both the forces they get balanced. And because the forces are balanced, the ship can float on water. So this is the use of up thrust that due to up thrust, the objects can float on water. Up thrust only takes place, it is a force which only acts on the objects which are on in a fluid like water, water is a fluid. So what fluids or on what areas do up thrust forces act? Up thrust force exists in liquids such as lakes, oceans, pools, swimming pools and even cups of tea. So if you have any liquid in a glass or in a container, up thrust force acts in it. It is a push that always goes straight up against the direction of the force. So from the word up thrust up, up the word up is there in this word that means the force acts upwards opposite to the force of gravity. So gravity is always downwards towards the earth, up thrust is in opposite direction that is upwards. So wherever liquids are there or water is there, up thrust force acts on those fluids. Now do you know that the objects, the weight of the objects in water is always less than that in air. So if an object is weighed in the air, its weight is taken in the air, if it is let us say 10 kgs, the weight will be less than 10 kg, the same weight of the object is taken in water, the weight will be less. Now why does this happen? Why does an object weigh less in water than in air? This is nothing but by the force which is acting on those object and that is up thrust. Let us see one more example of force where up thrust force acts on the fluid. So if you are having a glass of juice and if you place a straw or drinking straw in that juice, it floats up and sometimes it rises high. If the glass is taller, it will float up. It will not be at the bottom of the glass. So why does this happen? Which force is it that is pulling the straw upwards? It is nothing but it is up thrust.